So before we get into it, if you know you're interested, you want to see how I made this, I recreate this dress, keep on watching. And I want to tell you the second reason. I have two reasons why I use Ankara instead of crepe, okay? First reason, we are drafting direct to the fabric. And the second reason is because I want to see how it look and to be honest, I love the outcome of it. So if you're new to my channel, you are welcome. My name is Chile Rag. And if you're yet to subscribe, please kindly do so. So let's get started. So guys, let's get started. On the table, I have my chalk here. I have my table roll. I have my buttons. And also I have my fabric zigzags here. I'm going to get my French curve roll later. Okay, I forget to drop this here. So yes, basically this is what we need for now. So I have my Ankara material here. This is three and a half yard. But I'm going to use three yard. If you're on a small size, you, you are going to need three yard. If you're on a bigger size, three and a, three and a half yard or four, it depends your size, okay? So, yes, I was supposed to use crepe, but because I don't have a pattern paper and I cannot wait till when I get, I don't know when I'm going to get it. Even up to now, I haven't got my pattern paper yet. So, yeah. so I decided to use Ankara. So, this is the fabric I was supposed to use initially. Well, based on I don't have pattern paper, so I decided to just use Ankara and try it this time. So anyhow, it came out. I'm still going to wear it. So, but I'm going to make the style with this crepe later on. So for today or for now, we are going to use Ankara. Okay. So I'm going to open it so I can cut out my front piece and my back piece. And the measurement I'm going to use to cut out is my round hip circumference divided by 4 plus 2 inches for the back pattern, okay? And then from the back, uh, front piece, uh, pieces, I'm going to use my round hip circumference plus the uh, quarter of my round hip circumference plus 4 inches because of the button allowance, okay? But I realized that it was too much, so I have to trim off. Then take out my button allowance for the front first. So I'm going to be marking 1.5 inches because this is the allowance that I want to keep. I want to have overlapping from the front, okay? So that is why I, I'm keeping so much allowance. If not, this pattern that I'm using, you don't really need much allowance, okay? So I'm going to be marking 1.5 inches from the front. So this is the front pattern I'm working with, okay? I'm going to be marking 1.5 inches all the way down so i will use that line as a guideline okay so if you don't want overlapping you can just keep just one inch okay you're going to use 0 0.5 to join your facing and then the remaining one you use it for your button allowance but based on i want to have overlapping okay that is why i kept allowances of 1.5 so now i have arranged my back uh, pieces on top of the front okay so we are going to start now. The first thing I need to do, I need to create a starting point. Okay, so that is what I'm doing here. I'm going to connect this straight line here. So it's going to become my shoulder line. So from that shoulder line now that I create, I'm going to uh, mark the half of my shoulder measurement. So this measurement I'm marking is on my back pattern, not the front pattern, okay? Okay, so from the center of my back uh, pattern, I mark 7 inches, okay? Please, I know maybe you are not seeing clearly, but if you can see, please just pay attention and see where I'm placing my tape, okay? So from the shoulder line down, I'm going to place my tape like you see me doing to take the length of my, my dress, okay? So I want to have at the end of the day 33 inches. I don't want it too long. I want it a bit short, okay? So I marked 35 here, and then I, the total length I took here was uh, 37, but I later reduced it a lot, okay? I reduced it to have at least 33 inches or So I repeat this line here so that I can have a straight line. So what I mark here is 37 inches, okay? So if you don't want it too long, you can use any, any length you want, okay? So the next measurement we are going to be taking now, we are working on a vertical measurement, okay? So the next measurement, I'm going to mark my bust line. From my shoulder to my bust line is 10 inches. So I repeat the line and I create my line there. So the next measurement I'm going to be taking right now 
is my waist measurement. So from my shoulder to my waistline, I is going to be 16 inches. So that is what I just mark, okay? So the next measurement is going to be from my shoulder again to my hip line. So from my shoulder to my hip line, since you're making a dress, I'm making use of uh, 24 inches. So when I measure from the waist to my hip line, the distance from the waist to the hip line was 8 inches. So that is what I mark 8 inches down, okay? So the next now, I'm marking my, my neck width, okay? My neck width is 3 inches. And then the back neck depth is 1 inch. So the reason why I'm using 1 inch because I want to use 0 0.5, okay, to join my band. And also from the width, when I'm going to use 0 0.5 to join my band. So at the end of the day, I'm going to have a total width of uh, 3.5 by 1.5 from the back, okay? So from that shoulder line, I'm going to mark 1 inch down for my shoulder slope. You know, our shoulder is not straight as a human being. So you, are, you need to consider that. So you need to mark one inch down to create your shoulder slope, just like you see me doing, okay? So the next, I'm going to connect my back neck depth, just the way you see me, okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I need to work on my armhole line, okay? So I'm going to, uh, initially, my, run, uh, my armhole line usually is 7.5 or 7.25 rather. So what I'm taking right here is eight inches. Since it's a shirt, it's not fitted, okay? So I need to create a little bit room for ease allowance. So I mark from that point where I mark my one inch below for the shoulder slope, I mark eight inches down. So to have an accurate straight line, I'm going to repeat my shoulder, half of my shoulder measurement, okay? Then I'm going to connect this line like you see me doing, okay? So this is my armhole line. So guys, I hope you are getting all my explanation. So if you do, I want to say thank you for watching. So the next, I'm going to start marking my horizontal measurement. So now is my rainbow circumference. My rainbow circumference divided by 4 is 8.5. And I'm going to add 1 inch, okay, for each allowance. Since it's a shirt, I need to create a space for that. For my hip line, I made a mistake. I should have marked my waist first, but I marked my hip line. My round hip circumference is 10 plus 1 inch, okay? That is 11. So I'm going to move down to my hemming part line there, okay? Um, I marked the 11 inches right there. So move back to my waistline. My round hip waist circumference divided by 4 plus 1 inch allowance, Okay? So the next now, we are going to connect this all around. So basically, we are almost done with the drafting. So the next now, I'm going to find the midpoint between this line, okay? So I have 4 inches there. That is the midpoint. And then I'm going to mark 0 0.75 inward, okay? So that I can create my armhole curve. So the next, I will place my uh, straight ruler like that and I connect then use the curve line to create my armhole line. And the next, I'm going to add 0 0.5 inch joining allowance so that I can join all my pieces, the shoulder together and then this, uh, my sleeves to join my sleeve. I need the 0 0.5 to join my sleeve together, the side 0 0.5. Then the lower part, I don't need to add because I already add two inches to my to the lower part so the next thing now we are going to cut all the excess that we don't want out okay so i hope you understand my explanation so if you do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video okay so and if you're yet to subscribe please do so okay so now i need to work on the front uh, part, uh pieces okay so what i'm doing here I just trace the line, the boss line out from here. So I'm going to connect this straight line here. This is my boss line. So we're going to use this as a guideline. When we get there, I will let you know, okay? So this is the back and here is the front. So the first thing, why we trace this line out here, okay? So this is the guideline. I'm going to mark, uh, initially I wanted to use 1.5. But I, I feel like if I use 1.5, my chest is going to review so much. So I later use 2 inches. But I first of all mark 1.5, okay? 
So at this point, you you have to decide what you want. If you want your uh, cleavage to show more, you can use like uh, 1.5, then you use 3.5 to join your, your face in. But if you don't want your cleavage to show more, then you can just use any amount that you want, how it fits you, okay? So after marking two inches upward, I'm going to extend this line out, okay? So the next now I'm going to place my uh, cuff rule like you see me doing, and I'm going to connect it in this manner, okay? Don't use very, don't use a deep cup, a cuff, okay? Just make it shallow, not too shallow, but at least just create something just the way you see what I did, okay? Just follow the instruction, what I'm showing you. So that you will not end up having something you will not like, okay? So before I will cut out, I need to cut out these pieces for my facing. So this is my facing, uh, pieces I'm going to use for the facing. So I wanted to start cutting and I realized that I need the pieces for my facing. So I need to just place the, the both of them together before cutting. So that is what I did. And the pieces you need to cut, it should be wide enough to contain between from the... Uh, from the center of your front to the shoulder okay so that is what i just did so the next now i just want to cut out all the excess that i don't want from the facing okay and then i'm going to separate it open since we're working with the both the facing you need to separate it because they both have two two pieces okay so now that i separate it i'm going to trace out the part where i will cut out so trace the part how wide you want your facing to be inside I don't want my facing to be too wide, so that is why I trim it out so much like that, okay? So now that I've done with this part now, I'm going to also separate the front pieces. And one of the front pieces is going to be smaller than the other side. The side that is going to be bigger is where my buttonhole is going to be. So the part that is going to be smaller is where my buttons is going to be. So that is why the part where my button is going to be is the part where I'm marking 0.5 inch away from it, okay? So I'm going to cut this out just the way you see me doing. So this part is the button side. So I'm going to do the same thing to the facing, okay? I need to uh, cut out 0.5 inches. The first thing that I'm using for the button side, I also need to cut it out. So that is what I'm doing here, okay? So once I'm done with this, I need to cut out the excess that I don't want. So I'm going to arrange my pieces together now so that I can go to the sewing machine to join my facing together. So this is one side. This side is the part where the button is going to be, a button hole, okay? And this side here that I'm holding is the part where my button is going to be, all right? So after arranging it like this, I will go to my sewing machine to join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance, okay? So now I'm on my sewing machine. I'm going to start by joining my facing to my front pieces, okay? Please let me know if you have anything that you find it difficult to understand on this tutorial, leave your comment below. If not, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel and you're yet to subscribe, kindly do so. So you will stay updated to when my new tutorial is going to be dropping, okay? And you can also reach me out on my Instagram account. Stay connected so that any update I'm going to be dropping on a new tutorial, you will be the first to see, okay? So after joining my facing i'm going to head back to my ironing table to do the necessary things i need to iron it i need to make a notch i need to iron facing on it okay so there are so many things i need to do so remember to notch the the side where you stitch okay notch it so that when you're ironing it is going to stay proper so i have done notch all my pieces so now i'm ironing them so the next, I'm going to iron facing, okay? I'm going to iron interfacing on top of the, the part where my button hole is going to be. I'm supposed to iron facing on this part first before joining it together. I totally forget, okay? Please, don't do my mistake, okay? Make sure you iron facing to your 
or to the part where your button is going to be to prevent your fabric getting spoiled when you are going to make a button hole okay it's this is it's a must do okay so once i'm done trimming this i'm going to place it back and iron it so now that i'm done i'm going to trim all this excess out so i will open it again i will open it again and iron it so that i will have it look so nice and tidy from the outside okay so once i'm done i will get my interfacing go to my weaving machine which i just did i just uh, weave the interfacing on it so it's going to be easy for you to iron so the next now i have my two uh, my three pieces the back and the two pieces of the front the back the right side is facing me and the wrong side is facing down okay so i will get my two front piece like you see me doing okay i'm going to place it here please just pay attention to see you're going to see that 0 0.5 inch is going to remain the excess from the uh, the tip of your shoulder or to the neckline of the back okay so just avoid that because that is the part where you're going to are you uh the part where your collar is going to be you're going to start stitching from that part to stop there okay so i'm going to repeat the same thing i'm going to pin my front piece to the back piece the other shoulder okay i will go to my sewing machine to join it with 0 0.5 so now that i'm done joining it okay so this part here is where your collar is going to uh, be okay so i have my collar here the pieces i'm going to use for my collar this is linen material okay so i choose to use black so see how it's going to come out okay so yeah and the length i have here is 54 inches by uh two inches because it's on fold okay from the mid point here as you can see it's, it has a little bit tinier and there uh, from the head side is wider because i want to make uh, that triangle from the edge of the tie so let's work on the uh, the triangle part i'm going to mark 3.5 inch below okay and i will connect a straight line so from that straight line from the edges again i need to find the midpoint which is uh, 1.5 i'm also going to mark the midpoint here also so there i will connect a straight line here to use as a guideline so from the both sides i'm going to mark 0 0.25 okay so that i will connect it so i will just make a straight line to stop where that line is just the same the same thing from the other side okay so i will go to my sewing machine i will join them like you see me doing okay i'll just join them so for very close okay now that i'm done i'm just going to use my a loop toner to turn it out and then i'll iron it so this is my bow tie okay or my collar bow tie whatever it is called find the midpoint by ironing it to have a crease line just the way you see me doing okay so i will get my back i will get my shirt already okay i will get my shirt and then i will place it to the midpoint of the center back okay i will place it to the center back the midpoint of the collar to the midpoint of the center back i don't know if you understand me and then i will pin it like you see me doing okay i will pin it around and stop where that 0 0.5 inch that we left when we are joining our shoulder before okay so if you follow the instruction you will understand exactly what i mean so I will just pin it like you see me doing so that I can go back to my sewing machine to join it. Okay, so when I join it, I'm going to flip it back to stop stitch. I'll join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance. So the next thing we're going to do is to work on the sleeves, okay? I have gone ahead to work on, uh, cut my sleeve off camera. So the next tutorial is going to be how to make this particular sleeves, okay? So if you're interested to know how I did that, watch my next video, okay? So I will, I will join this to my shirt. So, so this is my shirt. So I'm going to get my sleeve and pin it to the bodies, okay? So turn it to the right side and place the right side facing the right side. That is what I, I'm going to do here. So you, you're going to find the midpoint of the sleeves and then you're going to place it just the way you see me doing, okay? 
going to place it there and then pin it for for this kind of sleeve i will advise you that you must pin down your sleeve if you're a beginner you must pin it so that it will help you straighten your stitching and also it won't frustrate you when you're joining your sleeve when i was starting learning how to sew sleeve was one of my biggest problem okay so by getting along with it you need to pin it down so if you don't pin it you're going to have trouble fixing your sleeve so now that i'm done pin it all so i will do the same thing to the other side of the sleeves so we can go back to the sewing machine to join it together okay so we are going to do this together so right now i'm on my sewing machine and the next now i'm going to start by joining it with 0 0.5 inch allowance that i kept earlier while i was drafting the pattern okay so like i said earlier you make sure you pin it down since you're working is going uh, some part of it part of the sleeve is a pleated uh shoulder okay so you need to pin so now that i'm done joining my sleeve i will unpin it and then go to my weaving machine to weave all the rough edges where i join my sleeve together and then get my shirt ready to stitch in the side seam so which is what i'm going to do right now so i will be joining my side seam together with 0 0.5 inch allowance so i'm starting from the sleeves okay so that is what i'm doing here so i'm stitching it with the 0 0.5 inch allowance that i kept okay so whatever allowance that you kept while you were drafting you should use it so once i'm done then i will head back to my cutting table so we'll work on the wristband okay so here is my sleeves and uh, this is the two pieces i'm going to use so I'm using the same material that I used for the collar, okay? So I've already gone ahead to cut out two pieces and also I have already ironed it. So the one, some of the part is going to could be just fold and then the part that is not fold is where I'm going to stitch to the sleeves, okay? So now let's work on the band. So the, the length of my band that I want is going to be three inches. So but I have here 3.5 inches. So I will use 0 0.5 to join it to the sleeve. So it's going to remain 3 inches, okay? So when you open it, it's 7 inches in total. So that is the length of my band. And then the round circumference of my ribs, since the material is stretchy, I will, my round circumference of my ribs is 7 inches. So I will just use exactly that 7 inches because I don't want it to look too loose. So I just use exactly seven inches so i use zero uh, add uh, one inch so that i can join the, the the band together okay so that is what I'm, i just did here so now that i did now i'm going to just connect this line out so that i can cut it out so once i'm done cut uh cut it i will join the two pieces together then i will cut it out okay so that i can have the accurate line so that is what i'm doing here okay so the next i will just open it okay just watch and see what i will do okay i will fold it back like you see me doing okay i will go and join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance i will also do the same thing to the side okay fold it like you see me doing and join it with 0 0.5 inch so i have done joining and also i have give it a very good press so this is what i'm doing here i just turn it this is how it's going to be just turn it halfway like this okay so yeah this is how it is so the next i will fix it to my sleeve so by doing that i'm going to find the part where i stitch okay from the side seam of the so what i'm doing now i need to turn my sleeve to the wrong side so the wrong side is facing me, uh, okay, and then I will fix my band in, okay. The Where the stitching is, I'm going to place it like that to the side seam of the sleeve too, okay. The right side facing the right side. So you're going to fix the band inside just the way you see me doing, okay. And then I will start pinning. As you can see, there are some excess. So you're going to try as much as you can to pleat it, okay. Try as much as much as you can to pleat it and then we're going to join it round. 
So I have done turn my band to my sleeve. So this is how it is. Let me take it out. So this is my band. This is how it's looking like. Actually, when I put on this dress, it actually looked like a jacket. It wasn't looking like that sh that style. But if you use crepe and also use the, the sleeve, you know, my own sleeves and the, uh, the band is different from the original design. Okay, it was too much drama for me. So I just went for this easier way. But if you want to get exactly what is on the original design, you can actually do that. But I hope you, you like this and I hope you enjoy the video. So the next I will just, um, I've already gone ahead to weave um, my interfacing or the face, uh, hemi gum, sorry, on the hemming part. So the next now I will iron it and that is it. So this is my dress. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope, I hope you learned something new from my channel. If you do, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're yet to do so. And don't forget to turn on your notification bell. So you'll be the first to be notified when a new tutorial will be dropping, okay? Thank you for watching. See you on my next tutorial.